this morning, and uh, we'll just give you a minute if you're coming online with us today. I know this is a little different for us, but go ahead and hit like, and if you want to, go ahead and hit the share button, and that'll get some more folks coming online with us as we get started today. What a great day this is to worship the Lord together. I know it's a little different for us. Uh, we encourage most of us to uh, maybe attend today online. And, uh, but we also have uh, it available for those that do feel comfortable to come be a part of the in-person service. And we have a few here today, and I'm so thankful for that. This is temporary. We're just trying to, out of an overabundance of uh, caution, trying to help prevent any spread of uh, the virus that some have been affected with. It's been a, been a, a challenging week for many uh, this past week, and, and uh, even... Before that, we had some in our church affected uh, with the virus, but uh, they're doing well. We've got one, only one that I know. We'll be talking about this a little later in our service. We're praying for her that's hospitalized with it, and uh, that's Denny. And we want to remember Denny today in prayer. And uh, as we do the others, we'll be mentioning more of that on the service today. But we're glad you're here, and God is good. Can somebody say Amen. Amen. There we go. God is good. Praise God. So we're going to go right into our worship time today. And uh, again, hit like, hit share, and let's worship the Lord together. Hey, He's with us. Amen. Whenever we agree together, the Holy Spirit starts to move. will be done whenever we agree together the holy spirit starts to move whenever we agree together oh his mighty power he will prove and when his children love each other till their hearts become as one and two or three agree together he promised he will be there the work will be done that night oh, that night when Paul and Silas they were in chains in the county jail somebody must have been agreeing a mighty power began to fill this place off and the doors open wide perfect timing for a big earthquake whenever we agree together 
together, the Holy Spirit starts to move, whenever we agree together, oh, His mighty power He will prove, and when His children love each other, till their hearts become as one, and two or three agree together, He has promised He will be there. Work will be done whenever we agree together. The Holy Spirit starts to move whenever we agree together. Oh, His mighty power He will prove. And when His children love each other, till their hearts become as one, and two or three agree together. Promised he will be there, the work will be done. When just, when just a few believers came together, all in one accord, somebody must have been agreeing. Oh, cause that jail begin to shake. No longer weak, they begin to speak. Shekinah glory on His face whenever we agree together. Oh, the Holy Spirit starts to move whenever we agree together. Oh, His mighty power He will prove. And when His children love each other, till their hearts become as one. promised he will be there the work will be done and two or three agree together he has promised he will be there and the work will be done oh thank you lord hallelujah 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 let's just worship together. Oh, let's just pray. I'm going to pray. The Lord, let's just lift our hands go oh, to heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just Just praise the Lord. Let's just lift our 
sing it. I sensed his presence. Oh, you're a witness this morning. Oh, you're a witness this morning. And at his feet, whole peace of mind can still be geographically, but I know where we are today in the spirit. Come on, in the spirit realm, those of us that are here and those of you who are home, we are in the presence of the Shekinah glory of God Almighty. And I sense his presence in this room, and I trust and pray you can sense his closeness right there where you are today. You see, there's no distance with prayer. There's no distance with his presence. And there's no distance by the way of the Holy Spirit today. Amen. You can't lock him up. You can't chain him up. You can't cast him away. He's just as close as yes. the mention Hallelujah. of his name this morning. I'm going to sing this. We're going to sing this again. And I want you to, I'm going to stretch you a little bit. Just stand up where you're at in your home. Hallelujah. Or if you want to stand up here, you can. But if, wherever you are, I want you to just look up today. Hallelujah. And declare in your heart that we're standing. Oh, Moses saw the Lord. He was, he was in the place of a burning bush. But then it was more than just a burning bush. He was standing on holy ground. He was standing in the very presence yes. of God Almighty. Yes. And he's there in your house today. He's there in your home today. You're sick, receive a healing. If you're oh, discouraged, be encouraged. If you need a breakthrough, it's coming your way by way of the Holy Spirit. 
reach out and touch the Lord. Come on, church, just reach out this morning. As he goes by, you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment.
like I'm going to ascend to heaven, but actually Jesus says, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you always, even to the end of the world or the end of this age, and we're in the church age, and during this time of church age, while Jesus has ascended back to the Father, and Hebrews clearly states he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me, yet He's with us. How many's glad God is with us? And Jesus is in our hearts today still. He's, he's right in this room today because he said, it's expedient I go that another come. He's going to come as I've been with you. He's going to be in you. Amen. How many's glad you got Holy Spirit inside of your life today? And he walks with us and talks with us. And he's right here alongside of us. And thing I love about Holy Spirit. He's not going to leave us orphans. He's not going to leave us alone. He's not going to leave us uh, by ourselves. But He's that comfort. He's that friend. He's that one that comes alongside of us. And no matter what we face in this life or go through, what circumstance in this life, as a believer today, a Spirit-filled believer, He's with us always. Amen. And one of these days, this age is going to end. The church age is going to end. When's it going to end? When he raptures the church away. Amen. And guess what? He's coming and there's going to be a meeting in the air. How many's looking forward to a meeting in the air someday? In the sweet, sweet by and by. And we're still going to live out throughout eternity with the Lord. Wow, that is so powerful today. Father, I just ask you today to minister to the people of God today touch them wherever they are this morning Lord and strengthen them be an encouragement to them I pray Lord oh Father there's none like you and we love you and we bless you 
and we magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Laganda just keeps playing here just a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I just got a live text I said a moment ago of all the... Uh, we've had a few be affected recently in our church with uh, the virus. I've had some call. said, Pastor, I haven't been affected, but... Uh, I've been in contact with someone tested, and so you know they don't want to uh, be a harm to someone. There's situations like that as well. But I mention that because we've had one that was hospitalized, Denny Highball, and I just want to give you. I just got this while we were worshiping. If I can get it back up here, because I want to give God praise today. How many believes the Lord can touch in Baptist East Hospital today? Amen. Yes. It's been in ICU was moved in the ICU. I uh, just got this today. Uh, Denny was able to get some rest last night. Was able to eat some breakfast today. Come on, I think we ought to give God a great big praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He needs that to build his strength up and give him yes. nutrition. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, We're praying for Kenny and Cindy. We're praying for Denny and Linda. We're holding them up in prayer. We're praying for all those. We have many that some don't even have uh, the virus, but they have other illnesses today. We pray for them all today. How many believes Holy Spirit can touch them all today? Amen. I pray for Brenda Wilker today. I, what's some of them? Rose, Mary. I pray for Rose today. I pray for the Pinkstons today who I need to touch physically. I pray, uh, Lord, for Joanne today. I, I pray for the different ones. Pastor Doug today, still recovering. Oh, I tell you what, there's a long list we've been praying over, but let me tell you what, there's nothing too great for God today. Come on, somebody. I said there's nothing too great for God today. I see Patty and Mike here. They, they've not always had the vigor and the health this week that they want to, but they're here in the house of the Lord today. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today. God is moving. God is touching. Sam and Barbara are on the men's. Praise God. We want to continue to lift them up in prayer. Rita is back to work and uh, doing good. And you know what? I give God praise for that. Come on, somebody. God is working. And I praise him for what he's doing for Denny today. Oh, Father, I thank you for that. Lord, we just continue to pray for all of our people today. Lord, some have underlying health conditions and and, Lord, they're watching online today. Father, we just thank you, God, that you're the God of all protection. You're the God of all wisdom. You're the God of all grace. And you are the God of all healing. And I thank you for that healing touch today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this little song. And if you need a physical touch or a spiritual touch or an emotional touch, we'll get into the message here in just a moment. But let's sing this together. Something today from God. And you're watching this online with us. Just extend your hand out as a point of contact. As we sing the little song today, we all know. Oh, he touched, he touched me. me.
the year that he's had today or this year. Thank God Ken and Judy, the Lord's touched Ken. You know what? I don't ever want to forget to give God praise for this. Thought about Steve and Sherry. They didn't have the virus, but they've been under the weather. But we got a report from them yesterday. I think they sent a text to Lagana. They're doing wonderful. They're doing good. Hey, come on. How many's glad you know who can touch us today? Amen. In this life, you'll have some trials. You'll have some tests. Jesus told us that, didn't he? You'll have some adversity. But he said, be of good courage. I have overcome. I've overcome, you can overcome. Revelation to cries out and says, we're overcomers. They'll say we're overcomers in the end by the blood of the Lamb. Anybody glad for the blood of Jesus today? And by the words of our testimony. If you didn't have a test sometimes in this life, you wouldn't have a testimony. But the reason God's given you the testimony He's given you is because He brought you out of your test. He brought you out. I look back here and I see Tim back here. Tim had some major surgery this year. He's gone through a test like many of us have gone through in 2020. But he's yet standing here in the house of God this morning. Oh, I just give God praise today. He can sing the song today. He touched me. Praise God. Something. is in this place. Amen. The Holy Spirit is here and He's moving and He's alive and we give Him praise today. Amen. Well, uh, today um, as you leave, if you have an offering or something you want to turn in, uh, turn it in to uh, Bill back here and he'll collect it and uh, we'll get it turned into Sister Judy. Some have already done that and I know many of us are doing this online today, so you feel free to give as you want to give. Uh, maybe if you want to wait till you come back to an in-person service, that's great. Some have been uh, watching our services online for some time, and they send their support on to uh, Judy, our clerk and treasurer. And then we also have a P.O. box that you can send it to, and we'll give you that information in just a bit. But I just want to say, however you contribute and however you give and support the work of God here at Church of Life, Lagonda and I just say, God bless you, thank you, and may the Lord continue to prosper your, your life, your family, your health, and all your loved ones. Amen. Anybody glad that you serve a God that no matter how much we give Him of our time, or our talent, or our treasure, it's never enough because God always blesses us with more. Amen. And that's not even why we do it. 
It's just the principle. God laid it out that way. If you sow seed over time, be patient. It always produces a harvest in God's economy, and He blesses our life. So God bless you today. Amen is our prayer. Uh, this morning, we're going to go into the Word of the Lord. And uh, I know um, we worship there, uh, and, and I hope you, that was a blessing to you. We set out in our minds today and our hearts that uh, we just need to set some time aside, since most of us would be doing church online today, to really enter in and to really just wait on the Lord. And I believe we've done that today. I have sensed the presence of the Lord. Amen. He is here today, and I've sensed it with those that are with us as well in the service today. So with that said, I'm going to encourage everybody to go with Pastor today to Matthew, the 18th chapter. And um, I appreciate those of us that are in the in-person service, uh, though we're uh, less in number than normal. Uh, it doesn't make us any less passionate. I've seen hands raised, tears shed, hands clap. Why? Because we're worshiping God. Amen? This is all about God today. And so we give God praise. Matthew chapter 18. And uh, we started out today's service intentionally uh, with the passage or the song that relates to the passage today. We sang the little song, Whenever We Agree Together. And today I felt led of the Lord to share a thought today along those same lines concerning prayer. And the thought is just that, whenever we agree together. Anybody in here today or watching online can just lift your hand and say, Pastor, I know prayer works because it has worked in my life already. Every one of us in here. And, and we just got a praise report about then. We were, we've been talking about things God has already answered by prayer in our local church here in 2020, even though it's been a time of testing and trials for many, the Lord has been faithful and brought us through. And prayer changes things. Prayer not only changes things, but prayer changes me. Can somebody say amen to that? I notice that when I pray more, amen, not only is my walk with God closer and more intimate, but God begins to produce more fruit, spiritual fruit, through my life for the kingdom of God. See, prayer changes circumstances, but prayer oftentimes changes me. It changes my heart. It changes my thinking. It changes my attitude. If we ever had an example of prayer in all the scripture, and there are many examples in prayer, Amen. I hope this is better. They told me to change mics, so that's what we're going to do. Hope that works. Uh, many examples throughout the Bible about prayer. And we could go through the Old Testament, come through the New Testament. But my, no greater example of prayer could there possibly be than Jesus himself. Jesus modeled prayer. He taught us how to pray. It was Luke chapter 11. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Some people refer to it as the disciples' prayer. But Jesus taught his disciples and in doing so taught us a model of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and everybody said isn't that a beautiful picture of prayer Jesus taught us that prayer and we can look at his life. I think about one of the times that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed with such intensity in the garden right before his crucifixion. 
praying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. And the Bible says as he began to perspire in his fervency of prayer, that he's putting his whole heart in it. And those drops of sweat became as great drops of blood, of agony, and, and torment, thinking about the things that lay ahead and trying to get his will, perhaps, in subjection to the will of the Father. Yet, while the Son of God yet still facing the same, uh, the same trials as the Son of Man. But yet, the Bible says he prayed earnestly. Some couldn't tarry with him. The disciples couldn't tarry, the Bible says, an hour with him during that prayer. But he prevailed on, he travailed on. And when he prayed, he came to a place and he was able to say, Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. See, prayer changes us sometimes. And it changed Jesus on that occasion. Well, in Matthew chapter 18, we see a very powerful passage of Scripture. I do not have time to do justice the entire chapter. But if you want to look at it in your own reading, there are three things I've jotted down that we can zero in on in chapter 18. The first one is the power of childlike faith. In the beginning of the chapter, Jesus reminds us, except we come, become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But whoever will humble themselves as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. And he goes on talks about the importance of children he said it'd be better for a, a millstone to be put around someone's neck and cast into the sea than to hurt or to offend a little child or I believe you could apply it as well to one of God's children on this earth as well how many knows we need to be careful how we handle the uh, God's children amen we need to be careful about that but he says you need to become as a child and have childlike faith well, let me tell you what, it applies to prayers and our praying as well. You don't have to be uh, educated a certain level. You don't have to have a certain level of money in your bank account to come to God in prayer. The prerequisite in Matthew 18 is, if we're going to talk about prayer at all, remember, whatever you do for the kingdom of God, you've got to enter it with childlike faith. Become humble as a little child. How many knows we can do that today because we recognize there's no uh, strength, our ability, our independence in our own strength, our own abilities. We are totally dependent upon our Heavenly Father today. And that's the point that he's trying to make. The second little thing in Matthew 18 as I hurry along is the power of forgiveness and restoration. He tells us in this chapter that sometimes uh, the offenses come. And he reminds us that we should be careful when offenses come. Verse 15 of the chapter, he says, If a brother trespasses against you, go and tell his fault between you and him alone. And there's a process he deals with here. And he says, if he hears you, then you've gained your brother back. But he also says, if he won't, then you take one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word would be established. Sometimes we need to resolve uh, offense in a biblical process. Can somebody say amen to that? Jesus has outlined that. And if there's no progress, Jesus goes a step further. And he says, then... Uh, if they neglect to hear you, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. There's about three steps in that process, and i am not come here to preach on that part of it today. But I want you to get the context of this chapter this morning. He's talking about there's power in forgiveness and going through the hard steps sometimes of restoration so that we can love one another. How many knows that's God's plan, that we're able to love one another? And if you don't believe that, on down in the chapter, they said, well, Lord, how often should we forgive somebody? Same chapter, he said, 
seven times? He said, no, you should be willing to forgive someone seven times 70. Come on now, can I get a witness on that? So he's showing us in this chapter the power of childlike faith, the power of forgiveness and restoration. But what I uh, want us to focus in, or one more here, the power of the connection and influence between heaven and earth. Look at what he says. He says again, or excuse me, back up one verse, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He shows us this powerful connection. I call it an interconnection between the natural and the supernatural, between heaven and earth. What's bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. They're not independent of one another, but for a believer, for the church, they are codependent. They are interdependent, interconnected with one another. It makes sense when you think about what Paul said in Ephesians 6. He said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle in the natural, but against principalities, worlds in darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But catch this, oftentimes that spiritual wickedness, those rulers in darkness, those principalities manifest themselves in flesh and blood. Help me now. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? In other words, we have to remind ourselves of the power of interconnection between the natural life and the super. As a Christian, as a believer, last week I taught and preached about Colossians 3, set your affections on things above not on things of this earth. There's a connection there. If I set my affections on things above, not on this earth, if you read the rest of Colossians 3, you'll see how that will influence my walk down here on earth. Why? Because I'm not tethered down to this earth any longer, but I'm looking up to Jesus, the author. I'm setting my sights higher. I'm setting my affections on things above, and it's influencing my walk in the way I walk my life out on this earth. Anybody thankful Jesus has made a difference in your life? Not just in the life to come. He's making a difference in your life in the here and now, right here on this earth. Amen? So heaven and earth is very connected and we see that interconnection here in this verse now when it comes to prayer and this is the crux of what the Holy Spirit has sent me here to remind us all of today myself included is he says this knowing this interconnection between heaven and earth he says whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you that if two, everybody say two, two. Now besides me, two is the smallest numeric number besides one. I mean, there's only one smaller, me, myself, and I, one. But the next smallest is two. And so what is he saying here? He's saying that if just two of you, think how small of a group that is, just two of you, but yet powerful. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, I mean, he's glad we have a heavenly father we can last today. It will be done for them of my father, which is there in heaven. And then verse 20, he says, well, let's take it a step further. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. So he's not limiting it to two, but he says it can be as small. The power of this interconnection, the power of what I've come to talk about today is the prayer of agreement. There's power whenever 
We agree. We've been singing about it. Whenever we agree together, the Holy Spirit starts to move. He says if there's just two or three and you're gathered together in my name, I'm there in your presence. I'm with you. The Holy Spirit will start start to move oh hallelujah some of you are watching this right there with your spouse in your house or maybe you're by yourself today or maybe the kids are with you but there's not a large number of you right there watching let me tell you if it's just two or three we're watching this together online I just want to declare it out loud today I want the devil to hear it uh, he amen we're not shut down here at church alive today we're fully engaged with the power of heaven because there's more than two or three here there's more than two or three watching online and where two or three are gathered together Jesus is with us today oh somebody help me give the Lord a shout of praise I have the I just pray God help me have that childlike faith to accept your word for what it decrees in my see the, the point of it is this there's power in a prayer of agreement now don't misunderstand me there's, that doesn't mean we don't pray alone and there's not power in closet praying and, and, and personal prayer And I mean Jesus gave us many examples of going in solitary places and going alone in prayer I'm not opposing that at all we need that as well but today Holy Spirit has brought me here to remind us about the power that is in corporate prayer and in gathering together in prayer and us being together believing in unity oh how many knows the Lord always honors his people whenever we gather together with one mind and one accord Acts chapter 2 the Bible says they were in one mind in one accord what were they doing they were binding on earth and loosening on earth and things were being bound in heaven and loosed in heaven and they were agreeing in prayer in the power of agreement and suddenly there come a sound from heaven as of a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and, and the Bible says that cloven tongues of fire it, it appeared set upon each of them and they began to speak with tongues as the spirit gave them utterance what was happening the fire was falling the wind was blowing uh, the spirit was to sending uh, the people of God uh, we're experiencing the power of being in one mind uh, in one accord uh, praying for 120 days uh, and when they prayed uh, all of heaven opened up uh, and the blessings uh, begin to fall oh somebody needs to know something today you keep praying uh, you keep seeking uh, you say well there's not many of us you get your family uh, together and you pray at the table you pray in your living room uh, you pray wherever you are come to the house of God and pray pray and believe uh, cause God uh, honors prayer and he is with us whenever we agree together oh if you believe it somebody say praise the Lord today he's with us today hallelujah Oh man, I tell you, the Lord is here in the spirit and in the prayer and the power of agreement. We were praying last night. We checked on uh, Bud and Louise, Lagonda's uh, parents who live in Elizabethtown. And before we leave, as we do many times, there were just the four of us, and we begin to pray in the home. And uh, we begin to pray over them and pray for needs in our church and over our people and our church family and I just want you to know something I love my church family come on can I get a witness today I love church alive you're my church family and we've been praying Lagana I've been crying out to God for our church family intensely this week and uh, we know some of our family it's been several weeks some months before they could be among us in an in-person service but that doesn't make them any less part of our family here at church alive they're a part of us and we're a part of them and we pray for them every day 
And we love our church family. Amen. I I love all of the body of Christ. Don't misunderstand me. I love all of God's people. But this is my church family right here. And as a pastor and pastor's wife, we feel a definite assignment, prayer assignment, to pray every day for our church family. And so we were there praying together. And they were joining us in prayer. And all of a sudden, as we begin to pray... You could just feel the Shekinah glory come into that living room. Amen. And, and there were just four of us there, but suddenly, amen, there was at least, I know, uh, seven of us there. Amen. Because the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost came in the room. Come on now. Can I get a witness? Uh, and when we begin to pray and claim the blood of Jesus, uh, amen, the Holy Spirit began to bear witness. and. And it became evidence and speaking of tongues and the gifts begin to operate. I, what are you saying today, Pastor? I'm saying this. Um, there is power in prayer and there is something very powerful about the spirit of agreement in prayer. Whenever we get in one mind, whenever we get in one accord, I don't care if it's at your family altar, at the church's altar, or driving in your vehicle down the road in a car somewhere, amen, I'm telling you, God shows up whenever we agree together. Come on, amen. Amen, the Holy Spirit starts to move. I've been praying for those that are in the hospital, those that have been in the nursing home, those that have been shut in. I may not be able to get to them, But let me tell you what, Holy Spirit is right there where they are. And He's never left them. He's never forsaken them. Uh, But as we pray and believe the Lord, uh, I believe Holy Spirit is doing what doctors can't do. Uh, He's doing what nurses can't do. And I appreciate them all today. Uh, But there are things that the Holy Spirit can do in about 30 seconds uh, that no man can do in 30 years. Come on, church alive. Uh, Can I get a witness in here today? Well, we need to do today is we need to come together like never before in a spirit of agreement and say uh uh devil you can't have my family you can't have that marriage you can't have that situation you can't I cancel that assignment devil in the name of Jesus we bind our hearts together we stand opposed to spiritual wickedness in high places to principalities to wickedness And we decree uh, what Jesus said is true. Whatever we bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. Uh, Whatever we loose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, Deuteronomy says if one can put a thousand to flight, uh, two can put ten thousand to flight. Uh, can Can I find a prayer warrior around here today? Can I give me a prayer partner around here today? If you're online today and you'll be a prayer partner, you ought to type that out right there and say you can count on me pastor I'm a prayer partner today I'm praying for the people today oh hallelujah oh I don't know if you can tell but I'm getting excited up here today amen God is good whenever we agree together the Holy Spirit starts to move there is certainly a supernatural power that is released whenever we pray in agreement together. As I mentioned a moment ago, we see it in Acts 2. We see it in Acts 4. Peter was locked up in jail. But the church was together in a house, in a home prayer meeting. And they were praying together. And Peter was released supernaturally out of jail. Come on, somebody say praise God. Whenever we agree together in prayer, prayer of agreement leads to breakthrough. In some of our most powerful prayer meetings here at Church Alive, come on Wednesday nights when we gather together back here and we begin to pray. One of the things we do is we focus in and we come into agreement. So uh, Pastor Diana has us come into agreement on certain Uh, intentional prayer focus points and we begin to embark on that and we pray together in agreement with those who are leading in prayer and you can just in the room you can just sense the level of faith rising come on am I telling the truth here today you can sense the level of 
of engagement with the spiritual realm, raising up higher and higher, and God hearing the prayers. Oh, no wonder James said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman, it avails much in the sight of God. But there's powerful prayer meeting happens on Wednesday nights. Why? Because we're praying in agreement and we're praying together. I don't have to read it out of a book. I'm thankful that I attend a church, not because of the pastor, and I'm not taking credit. I attend a church where people believe in praying the prayer of agreement, and they believe in praying together, and it has had a positive and supernatural impact upon my life. Can somebody say amen to that? Our, our uh, grandson, Lincoln, has gone through some health things this year. And I can honestly say it has been because of my church, my Church Alive church coming together. Oh, I know we pray all the time, but those prayers of agreement on Wednesday night where we really come focused and intentional on our prayer focus, I believe it's partly and in, in part of those specific prayer times, Lagonda, that I can stand today and give God praise that my grandson is doing well. Amen. And God is touching his body. Seven years old. But let me tell you what. Amen. Sometimes to get your faith to become a childlike faith, you have to be touched by a child. Help me now. Am I, pre am I preaching here at the right place? And it's, if it's your child or another child, I don't care what, whose child. When I see a child, sometimes on television, they'll put a situation of a child that's suffering either cancer or disability or something and I it's hard for me to watch that it does something in me it it creates a, a, a spirit in me that is just crushed with the weight of that and I I don't even know who they are but I just begin to pray for them whoever they are and wherever they are I just I can't help and and, I'm, and you say, well, that sounds childlike. Well, when you're touched with a child by a child, you'll humble down and your faith becomes childlike uh, almost immediately. Oh, hallelujah. And I thank God for children. I think it's a shame in our nation. And I'm not going to belabor the point, but I think it's a shame. In a God-fearing nation called America, we have devalued children to the point that the reason we don't have childlike faith is we don't value children. We don't value a child. And there's millions of abortions that take place on this country. And I believe the blood of the innocent unborn are crying out. And I believe today that if our nation doesn't wake up and have a spiritual awakening over this dismemberment and this killing and this abortion of babies, God forgive us. Oh, church, if there ever was a time we need to bind things on earth that they'll be bound in heaven. And we ought to loose things on earth that they'll be loosed in heaven. Today is the day. Hear the cry of the innocent blood today who's going to stand up and be a prayer partner who's going to stand up and claim the blood of Jesus for a spiritual awakening in America if the church doesn't do it who will I ask it's time to rise and shine church of the living God this world doesn't need just another denomination this church doesn't need this world doesn't need just another church going through the motion on a street corner somewhere this church this world doesn't need uh, just another group of religious gatherings uh, along the streets of USA. What this nation needs uh, is for some God-fearing, Bible-believing, blood of Jesus claiming people to pray uh, in a spirit of agreement. Oh, come on, would you help me praise God for it today? Hallelujah. I say this today. Because this is something I believe the Lord is speaking to my life as well. I'm closing with this. Hey Amen. You guys can't see this online. There's, again, far less of us here today than normally. But I'll tell you what, they've been very supportive of their pastor today. Amen. And I praise God for them today. As I know you have been at home. Praying with one another in agreement does several things. 
Elmer Towns once said, when you pray in agreement with others, then that means there's no loophole. There's no alternate plan. And there's no changing of your mind. Because there's a level of accountability with one another when we pray together in a spirit of agreement. If you look at the word agreement in that passage, it comes from a Greek word, sophonophis. I probably mispronounce it. But it's the same word that gives us the word picture in the English language of voice or noise. Or the one word that really stood out to me is the word harmony. In the English language, this Greek word is the same word we get the English word symphony from. Think about that. When a symphony, an orchestra, is doing music, there's harmony, right? Everybody's doing their own thing. They're in unison. Yet, while there's different musical instruments, different musicians, there's only one conductor. And I don't know if you've been to an orchestra lately, but a few times I've been, they do that little warm-up. Anybody know that little warm-up? The flute players are honking and clarinet players are honking and you know everybody's doing their there's going up and down the scale you know and they're just warming up and all of a sudden that conductor steps up and he kind of taps that little stain and he raises that conductor stick and all of a sudden he gets still and he begins to raise that and direct that orchestra and all of a sudden what seems so chaotic everything in every direction all of a sudden this beautiful harmony and they're in melody together what has happened they're in agreement they're playing in harmony they're lifting up a noise that's what the prayer of agreement is is when we get in unity and symphony and harmony together and we pray believing together for needs there's supernatural power. See, sometimes if we're not careful, if we pray, you can have prayers going every which way, and it might not be quite as effective as when we as the believers get together and we listen to the conductor. See, when you pray, one of the key things is this. We should let the conductor, who is the Holy Spirit, hello? I mean, knows he's the one that's leading us in our prayer. See, there's a lot of things to pray about. We have great needs everywhere. But what is the conductor leading us to agree together in prayer? What is Holy Spirit tapping and saying, okay, this is what we're going to agree to bind on earth and loose on earth today? That, my friend, is what you and I are invited to do today. Amen. As Lagonda comes, he says, where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Agreement in prayer is powerful because it helps us to bear one another's burdens. How many know sometimes when you can't pray for yourself, it's good to have a prayer partner praying with you? Praying together in the power of agreement helps us from experiencing tunnel vision in our prayers. Sometimes when I'm praying with others, it's, it's good for my life because I've gotten real tunnel vision in my praying and I figure out there's a different and new vision, a new perspective about what need needs to be prayed over and it helps me in my own prayer. It gives me wisdom sometimes and a new perspective in prayer. I thank God for a spirit of agreement and prayer. I thank God for a praying church. My church, Church of Life. There's so many much more that can be said about this, but as I close this morning, I close with this thought. We need to pray in the prayer of agreement with confidence. Somebody say amen if you believe that. The Bible says... But without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, it's impossible to please God. But he that comes to God that believes that he is, they believe he's a rewarder of them that 
diligently seek Him. We can come boldly with confidence. God honors faith-filled prayer. And we can come to Him praying the Scripture. See, some people ask, their prayers aren't answered. The Bible says because they ask amiss. Or they ask contrary to God's will. But what keeps us on track is, the Bible says that we should pray God's word together and we should pray according to God's will and His will is His word. 1 John 5 and 14 says this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will or in agreement with His word or His plan, He hears us. Oh, how many is glad the Lord hears our prayers? Thank God. Confidence. Thank God for faith. Thank God that we can pray the Word of God and pray God's will. We should pray with fervency and perseverance. Luke 11 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. In other words, when we pray, one thing that's great about praying together in a spirit of agreement with others is we can encourage and spur each other on to keep on keeping on. Amen. Keep on keeping. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking at the door. Oh, you may have not seen all the answer you, you, you want to see just yet, but it doesn't mean God hasn't heard your prayers. In fact, Revelation says there's a bow in heaven and all the prayers of the saints are being collected in the bow. And guess what? There's coming a time. Your prayers and someone else's prayer and someone else's prayer, it's going to fill that bow till it runs over and the Lord is going to deliver and the breakthrough is going to come. So child of God, don't get discouraged in you're praying get you a prayer partner get your spouse get your family get somebody in the church your brother and sister and keep on interceding keep on believing keep on agreeing bind on earth so to be bound in heaven loose on earth so to be loosed in heaven God is hearing your prayers and keep encouraging one another in their prayer and I want us all to stand today even I'm going to stretch some people maybe that have been watching maybe they'll come later and watch it but wherever you are and you're watching this if you're physically able I want you to stand too just stand up with us this isn't going to take but a moment but I want to lead us in a prayer of agreement today it's closing this sermon see it's one thing to preach a sermon how many know sometimes we need to experience the sermon Amen. and that's what we're going to attempt to do today this is certainly not meant to take pl place or replace your praying. But let us agree in a certain prayer today, together as believers, both online and in this room today. And today, let us focus in on victory over all the attacks of the enemy. How many would just agree with Pastor today? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in us. So I'm going to declare some things out loud. And if you agree, you can just kind of pray along with Pastor or say amen or, you know, devil, you're, you're a liar. You know, whatever the Holy Spirit brings in your spirit to agree with this prayer. I want you to just have the confidence and the boldness to pray this with me in your spirit today. In this prayer of agreement, we declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement together according to the living Word of God. You said in your Word, Jesus, that my Father will grant you whatever you ask in my name, John 16 and 30, 23. You said in Mark 11 and 24, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you and you shall receive it. Father, we just declare those things out loud today in the Spirit of agreement and number one today we agree today in prayer as the body of believers at church alive we we agree to get today in prayer concerning our covenant of health and welfare as we stand on psalm 103 1 through 5 the word of god declares bless the lord oh my soul 
and all that is within me. Bless his holy name who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I decree it out loud today, by faith today, in a spirit of agreement that this prayer declares we are healed by the stripes laid upon the back of Jesus. We are made whole by the name of Jesus. Our families are healed. Our loved ones are healed. Our extended family is healed. I decree today that we lift up all those who have been affected near and far by the virus recently. And we believe for their deliverance. We decree and declare concerning our covenant of protection from disease. According to Psalm 91 and 10, I read and I declare there shall shall no evil befall us neither shall any plague come near our dwelling I declare no weapons formed against us shall prosper we take authority over sickness uh, over diseases uh, over spirits of infirmities uh, I take authority over the spirit of lack and limitation I cry out uh, that God's people will lack for nothing uh, their needs shall be supplied uh, according to the riches in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit that we can bind up the enemy. We can bind up disease. We can bind up all the sickness and we can loose the healing presence of the Holy One of Israel in the lives of our, of our loved ones today. In Jesus name. We take authority in Christ over every disease. And God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. I want to say this today in prayer of agreement. We stand on Philippians 4 19. It says, But my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Can I say today from this pulpit, the Lord is our provider and the one who supplies. Amen. I say today that we're free from fear in our prayer of agreement today. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God for that promise. I pray in a spirit of agreement today for our nation and our government. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we should offer supplications and prayers and intercessions, giving thanks for all men, for kings, and for all those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Today, Lord, we pray for our president. Today. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the world leaders. We pray for all who walk in authority, that they may walk and understand the highest degree of authority. And that's the wisdom of God. We pray, Lord, for our medical folks, our public health officials, our first responders, anybody that's on the front lines today. We lift them up to you and we decree that, Lord, uh, they will be blessed today. They will be strengthened today. We pray a prayer of agreement that you will put a hedge of protection about them today. And we declare this morning that we have victory in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Can somebody just say the name of Jesus with me? Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. Come on, everybody, one more time. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind you and render you helpless, not in our name, but in the name of Jesus. We loose angels to go forth and minister on our behalf in the name of Jesus. We claim healing, protection, freedom from fear in the name of Jesus. And we plead and claim the blood of Jesus over our lives today. According to your word, we thank you for it. And we call it done in Jesus' name. And everybody said... 
Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. Whenever we agree together, the Holy Spirit starts to move. And you are with us. You have been with us. I pray, Lord, as we leave this place, I pray today, God, that you'll continue to be with every person that's watching, every family that views this online. I pray you protect them, help them, honor them, and bless them. Father, we pray and we thank you for victory that is ours because of the work of the cross and the work of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. We love you and thank you for being here today. You have a great afternoon and we're praying for you. God bless you. Amen.